Um, so, should we start? Yes, let's start. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to uh, listening and, and watching, hopefully, uh, the Shindrex channel's uh, next in newest installment of uh, God's Air. So, today we again have managed to get us a, a star guest. Uh, <laughs> this time it's uh, Angel Smiralda. Uh, uh, then we have uh, the usual suspect, uh, Shelda Putite. Uh, and Waltz Mitchelsons. And I am Indrek Grigor. And uh, today's uh, victim is uh, the Shared History Exhibition uh, in uh, Riga, Birja, uh, curated in the Birja version by Inga Latsia. Uh, so, I don't know, I, I kind of feel we should have uh, agreed on where we start. Uh, Shouldn't we start by revealing our sins? Oh, yeah, like right, this. right, yeah. 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 <laughs> I even thought about that. So, uh, uh, Angels, reveal your sins. Yeah, so, because firstly I wanted to say that I'm working with Inga Latze together on Survival Kit, and hence I work with LCCA. But uh, to vindicate myself, I had nothing to do with this exhibition in particular. But I'm writing about this exhibition <laughs> <laughs> officially at a view, so... Uh, 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 but, uh, uh, but you are also connected to Survival Kit by Inga Lutz and uh, uh, Angels are, uh, are their uh, curators. So I'm a little, bit, uh, a little bit smaller sinner because I'm an editor of the catalogue, so, but, you know, Angels is kind of a co-curator, so she has a little bit bigger sin than yeah. I, I, I do, I think so, at least. And Waltz is again <laughs> translating everything and everybody. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> translate some bits for the Shared History exhibition as well as the Survival Kit exhibition, uh, but yeah, I'm just the uh, devil's little helper. Okay, and I just wrote a review about Inga Lutz as a curator. I uh, might have been a bit sympathetic, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so anyway, the point is that the world is very, very small and we are interconnected and we can be, of course, accused of every kind of... Uh, uh, I don't know, we, we had sympathies towards the uh, uh, authors and, and so on, so... We can have our soft spot. Yeah, we, we uh, <laughs> admit uh, and two words. <laughs> agree to every kind of criticism. But c coming to the criticism... <laughs> so, where do, where, where, where do we start? Um, I, I think a good place to start yeah. uh, would be that for me it was the first... Uh, and it's not an easy thing to say. Uh, for me it was the first visit to the permanent exposition at the uh, Riga Bourse. I had never been there before. I mean, uh, in its previous guise as the Foreign Art Museum, which was located in the Riga Castle, I had uh, passed through the permanent exposition on my way to various uh, temporary ex ex exhibitions, but uh, this is the first time in, the, in its current venue. This is actually interesting, things that I did not thought about. Now they have in the new building uh, where they are since 2010, if I'm correct. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the and and it, now they have kind of divided kind of the exhibition spaces from uh, the, the the contemporary exhibition spaces from the permanent exhibition spaces, so you can actually avoid each other. Uh, in the old building, uh, in the old set settlement, which was in presidential castle. Uh, there you had to go through the permanent exhibition to actually mm -hmm. get to the changing exhibitions, which is kind of interesting how... I think also in the context of this topic about... Uh, mm. kind of segregation also topic, or not segregation topic, so yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, congratulations! Yeah. Thank you. I'm quite <laughs> proud of that. I was curious actually to ask someone who uh, lives in Riga all the time, because I only started coming here in March of this year, so it was also my first time in the... Uh, permanent exhibition of Riga Wurz, but I didn't feel too guilty about it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I visited it quite early after, or, you know, not early, they are there since 2010, so I might have visited it in like 14 or something like that. But you have not been to the previous ones? No. no so, yeah. in, in this uh, sense, so, so you don't know about what I was whining now about, that there is also, they are very proud of their mummy? 
and uh, <laughs> and but but in the in the new building, the other mummy, which for me and other kids, <laughs> little girls, <laughs> little, yeah yeah yeah, also boys like it. Uh, there was also used to be in the old one also a cat mummy. Oh yes, which was really mm. cute. And now it's not there anymore. It's so a nice I heard about opportunity. this. Opportunity. <laughs> well, but sticking to the exhibition, uh, yeah. uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I think the, the the arrival was made all the more, more dramatic the, uh, by the fact that I went up with the elevator, and the first work that I saw was uh, Tunnel Runder's. Uh, first landing of the Bremen merchants and uh, mm. I thought that was uh, quite uh, quite appropriate to, to the whole experience and the, the, the fact that it's the first visit to the exhibition so I had a little bit of a uh, uh, sense of adventure and discovery when I went in there. Okay, no, no, my experience was in this sense destroyed that the opening venue started on the fourth floor, so it kind of ended ended up in mm -hmm. uh, visit like seeing tunnel. Uh, but uh, talking because Shelda raised the, oh no actually you, well, anyway because we raised the question of of the exhibition being now part of the permanent show like being within it and that, that being the first of of this kind. Then uh, uh, one of the things that we were we were talking with Shelda about was that. Uh, the way how the the permanent was then in a way part of the of the temporary show uh, and that it is well enough because i uh, there is this particular uh, indonesian artist uh, whose portrait hangs there and who has painted uh, the hunting of lions or something like that that inga Latsa refers to it because one of the uh, one of the Artists or, or like I don't know, characters of the exhibition. Uh, um, Claire Holt. Claire Holt. Yeah. Uh, she was an art, among others also like kind of anthropologist or something like that. Anyway, very much connected to Indonesia. And in the English system, in one of her texts, uh, referring to the connection between this. Uh, was it, I think it was 19th century Indonesian artist or something like that. Mm. Uh, it, 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 something like but, that. Yeah, but, 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 but this connection is in no way. Uh, obvious. It's, it's not even mentioned in the in the in the booklet. I actually heard it first from Angus, and and now I started to dig around at the project's homepage. And at the project's homepage, I see this this parallel being made. But other than that, uh, all the connections seem to me totally you know random. Or, or like, I, and I don't also understand why it isn't kind of you know why isn't it then fetished when it is there? Or I, I was a bit. Uh, I think that's one of the things to discuss about this uh, integration into the collection because it is quite uneven and um, I have to say firstly that I really enjoyed the idea of going into a collection and activating it but of course in some places it's more successful than others. And I think with this one I think um, because I also have to admit that um, Indrek and I went back yesterday to catch up with the exhibition so uh, I might have already repeated some things to him, but uh, for instance, this in, with Claire Holt, um, it could have been a very strong connection to have it next to the works that it actually has this parallel with. You have this uh, Indonesian painter in the 19th century who's traveling in Poland and Germany, and I think also into Lithuania, I'm not 100% sure on that, but he's definitely traveling in that area. And some of his works are purchased from some uh, Riga kind of wealthy uh, collectors. And so that's how they end up there. Um, so it could be interesting to make this parallel between actually an anthropologist and a collector, but it's missed physically inside the exhibition. Where they do, in my opinion, a very good connection is at the same time on, on uh, this uh, Krishna Reddy that mm -hmm. was uh, display that was dedicated to this uh, Indian art exhibition. And that's Riga. the next work in the uh, yeah. It's but the same trajectory. it's this Western galleries because yeah. they're you know the, the exhibition. The exhibition is in two floors, like Walt said, he first ended in the third floor with Daniel Randers' work, which actually is not in the permanent exhibitions, it's in the hall. Mm. Uh, so it's actually this kind of almost, which again is kind of a nice idea for those who understand the concept. <laughs> I don't know if everybody read it like that, is that, that you know, the Bremen merchants, they ended up on the coast of Daugava and, and it's kind of like on the 
borderline of the permanent <laughs> exhibition or something like that. And then, you know, all the goods are brought in into those rooms, you know, all the merchants' goods from around the world or whatever kind of... Um, and, and then the third floor actually is not so much about the west, uh, but it's more the east, east uh, block or the east culture, artifacts uh, and art and, 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 and it's called whatever. The oriental. Oriental, oriental yeah, yeah, actually oriental. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and uh, it's in Latvian, just east. That's why ah, I okay. kind of automatically <laughs> I translate it directly from Latvian. Yeah, Oriental, and, and then the fourth floor, which is more dense with the exhibition works, if we can at all call it dense, it's not dense at all, but, but kind of there is more works, uh, uh, is the, the kind of uh, West collection or, or Western culture collection. And, and that's, and I guess where where the, the particular work, this Indi um, Indian artist uh, work is exhibited that used to be this Burj ballroom or kind of very representative uh, room uh, of the house, actually. Just to have the insight mm. for those who have never been in the space mm. or, or, or in a museum or, or don't know much about this Riga Burj uh, Museum, which is used to have the title uh, the Foregner Art Museum. Uh, and it, in the Soviet times, it had actually many titles. It had also Abendsland Art Museum and, 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 and many other weird uh, uh, tweaks around, uh, around its, uh, its, its uh, title. So, and the Riga Burj kind of title was made after it moved into this uh, house which was built um, especially for the uh, deals of the merchants. I don't know how to kind of in English uh, de de describe it. That's why it's called Riga Burj. It's actually for uh, Latvian Foregner Art kind of museum. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just an insight uh, before we continue, I guess, about uh, Indian yeah, I, I kind artists. Of, no, no, I kind of like the way how this Indian, uh, this Krishna Reddy, how his work was implemented into the collection because it used the same display box to show his, uh, mm. I guess, the watercolors or prints or something. And oh. Sorry, technical break. <laughs> I thought about it. So, uh, back from the break, <laughs> uh, I, I just very much enjoyed the way how this Indian artist was implemented into the permanent show that it used the same display boxes and it in a way used in the same topic because in the uh, in this uh, horizontal uh, box where there were those catalogues and, uh, and uh, archival uh, maps of the a folder of the previous, all, all, all from the museum's archive about the exhibitions. It also had a folder about African art, to, uh, which was obviously kind of this, uh, you know, masks, wooden sculptures, you know, this stereotypical thing. And it, in this sense, very well fitted uh, the, the selection of things fitted into this uh, permanent show. Or the, the mm -hmm. It's also it. interesting that there's a a kind of inversion. So we were just speaking about the format of the museum, how the third floor is this oriental. And then you're putting in the European, these kinds of uh, non-European arts, right? So the Congo exhibition, the Indian exhibition, and the anthropologist working in Indonesia. And so it's a kind of uh, political reversal of the, pol the enlightenment politics of separating the two, let's say, mm -hmm. in a way. In a way, but not till the end, I kind of... Because the, the, the same artists who uh, are on the fourth floor uh, are also on the third floor and their work in no way differ from mm. what is upstairs, which would kind of make this kind of change or... Uh, no, okay, with... Um, I need to see the names so that I don't mix up, actually. With Alexei Marashko is... Um, you could see that at some point there is with the kind of sort of like a joke like like in a joke kind of way made those symbols and, and little drawings uh, if you look around around the display what is the what is the artworks and what are they depicting then there is some kind of dialogue actually in some of the cases uh, but but all in all this was for me very confusing because mm -hmm. I I 
at some point it felt like that there is conscious decision made about why there is particular artwork like in Tunnel Randers case or yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah, this mixture of the that you don't obviously look put uh, kind of oriental in the oriental section or something like that which is nice and which makes this break but then at some points again it kind of doesn't make any sense kind of or there is an example with um, with Rerik's uh, work kind of, uh, of recopying of the Rerik's work and then making this kind of schematic research about different kind of links connected with the artist and his legacy, uh, which is, you know, of course made into the room where, where the artist's works are exhibited and there it is and it's in this uh, oriental section so there again is kind of one to one that it's it's there in the same room so it kind of mm -hmm. yeah so that, that that there there are those those little things which uh, which 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 makes kind of a lot of questions and and and, and no answers so for me many of the uh, or, or basically all the exhibition for me is more like you know those yellow uh, st stickers, yellow sticker kind of note that is put in around uh, permanent exhibitions with some kind of kind of comment about something or kind of which kind of trigger for a moment like like you know like a rock in the water that it kind of for, for a moment uh, makes this vibration and kind of that you kind of for a moment see the exhibition or the museum or the context totally differently than if you would just go and see the permanent exhibition. And then it comes back because there is no kind of, no bigger story. It's it's just those kind of little remarks everywhere or something like that. that and, mm. and I don't know, maybe it does, doesn't need to be, maybe it's meant to be like little footnotes I mean, or... Because going back to this work that you just mentioned, it was uh, mm -hmm. Mina Henriksen, yeah. who was uh, copying the Rorich uh, works. For me, um, I mean, works like this one that really took something from the permanent collection and really went into it and interacted with them, even bringing the objects into the work itself that also happened in uh, Andrei Strokin's, which is upstairs. Mm -hmm. For me, those were the two most powerful works because then it really, it not only makes sense, but it's also something new that's produced specifically for this context. Um, and then with the other ones, I didn't feel um, this element of randomness that it's uh, kind of just there sometimes without s such a strong connection. So yeah, this kind of the difference between these is quite uh, stark. Um, before we get too far away from that, I would just uh, I, I, I think it would be important to point out that the kind of uh, dialogue into which the, the exhibition enters with the permanent exposition is quite an active and uh, certainly political one. I mean, uh, compared to examples where you would have, uh, well, I'd call them more conservative approaches where uh, in a set of classical landscapes, for example, you would add a photograph of a contemporary landscape or something like that. Uh, so in this sense, it is not at all, uh, uh, well, uh, innocent, unambitious or complementary to the collection. I mean, in that sense, we, uh, I've I think it has to be said that uh, it is quite uh, yeah, an, active, an active addition to that. And uh, about the thing that you said about uh, shifting around the uh, artists from, uh, well, non-European non artists, putting them in the, this uh, collection of European art, uh, doesn't, it, doesn't it actually work the other way around that uh, they seem all the more exotic, especially from a Latvian perspective where we, uh, in fact, uh, I mean, uh, it, it is very nice that they have picked up this uh, exhibition history with, uh, with that exhibition of Indian art and uh, the exhibition from the, uh, I think it's the Republic of Congo. Uh, and uh, we certainly have had some others, but uh, for example, looking at recent exhibitions in Poland, where you would uh, have several exhibitions involving works from uh, non-European artists are dealing with non-European issues, it is still very much a territory of the exotic and it's probably still very difficult to, or still not so easy to talk about that in any other categories as those people from the faraway land that have bothered to come here or whatever, 
And mm -hmm. in that sense, putting uh, Krishna Reddy or Claire Holt in the gallery of Western European art, which uh, uh, I suppose many people here would uh, consider ours, uh, even though well, the link is quite tentative. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 I, I personally did, did really feel that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we tried to reclaim this history, but uh, I'm... I'm yeah, also as Claire Holt, uh, sort of, uh, I, I think small countries have the tendency to reclaim uh, people who have, who have achieved something, I mean, Mark Rocco and whatever, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, but yeah I, I don't know, for me, the, the, <laughs> the issue is still, I mean, uh, can we look at uh, Indian art without uh, thinking uh, funny things about spirituality, Buddhism and whatever? I mean, here in Latvia. Um, I actually want to add to Shelda as well to Waltz, and I'm not sure where to start, but okay, let's start, <laughs> let's start with Waltz. Uh, about uh, uh, Claire Holt. Uh, that I, I see you, totally your point about, uh, you know, those little, you know, uh, uh, Louis Kahn is an Estonian architect, as we all know, you know, he was born on Saarema, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Fact, you know. uh, so, but uh, uh, but in a way, this uh, Claire Holt in the exhibition, it, it, in a way, she is uh, connected to what Inga has been doing recently. You know, there was this portable la portable landscapes in um, uh, in the National Art Museum. Uh, so she has been very much digging now into this heritage of foreigner Latvians. Mm. Uh, and she even, uh, you know, when I asked about the way how to define her curatorial approach, like kind of in general, that she even used the term, what was it, uh, ar archival nerdy or nerdy archival or something like that. <laughs> so, so, she, th so in a way, uh, this clear hold in the exhibition is kind of the, you know, leftovers from the, uh, portable landscapes, yeah. Krishna Reddy also, because the, the well, actually, then, uh, uh, survival kit, yeah. Uh, and and also oh. from from the portable landscapes, because if you remember, Inga Lata was responsible for the Paris section, and and his story is very much also connected with from the there. Paris. So, so, so I think that there is also. I'm not sure, but I think that there might be a link also with her oh, yeah. working with the Paris materials. We so. picked up at this, well, actually in the exhibition yesterday, that you can mm -hmm. see a trace of past exhibitions influencing this one, and you see like a kind of thread kind of connecting this work. Mm -hmm. But also writing about some, and before that, of course, thinking about uh, uh, some of the other Contemporary Art Center exhibitions, uh, I have kind of marked this already before that they. Uh, they have this tendency, just like collaboration with some institutions, that they have this kind of romance around some things, and then they, you know, have this kind of uh, butterfly dance with those things for some time, and 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 it needs some kind of sometimes years for them to kind of totally kind of make this uh, step to something that would kind of don't be so obvious connected with the previous things that I uh, say have been doing it maybe it sounds a bit abstract but it kind of many things uh, that you could kind of also in this exhibition kind of make make uh, a lot of traces back to some uh, recently done other projects by them and uh, by kind of then this butterfly dance you could say also uh, with this connection with the National Art Museum that they have now for some two years in a very intensive form. Before that they did not have it so much. But then they before had maybe uh, collaborations a lot with other institutions like Regard Space was for some time their kind of space which they used. And, and now National Art Museum even is a little bit laughing about their relationship with the Contemporary Art Center that there is some kind of almost like, you know, this uh, unofficial marriage happening, you know, that that, uh, that there's actually two museums overlapping, you know, the Contemporary Art Center as this kind of non-existing uh, Contemporary Art Museum level that, that they're providing, which would be kind of things that Contemporary Art Museum would very much do, what, what is the format of what la Contemporary Art Center likes. And, and the National Art Museum then is uh, kind of doing those... The, the uh, fifth floor of Kumu for Latvia. <laughs> <laughs> So but like sometimes that. also, as we see, step down to some, <laughs> to some permanent <laughs> exhibition part. But this is, the, I think, their first time when they do, do it. Uh, 
in at least with the National Art Museum. I don't know if they have somewhere else done it, but but with the National Art Museum, I think it is. Okay, different. no, but I, I wouldn't necessarily criticize uh, or, or like my comment on, on on the choice and on the connections wasn't necessarily meant critically because you know when we talk about curators, then they all have their they have their topics, they have their handwritings, and they have their authors. I, I remember how weirdly it sounded for me when I first heard about this kind of, you know, as a as a young art critic, somebody telling me that, you know, and the curator comes with with, with his or her, uh, you know, Estonian, you can tell, uh, the curators come with their artists. And I was like, what the fuck? Curators have artists. Like, how, uh, but, you know, it, it's very true. And, and actually, <laughs> but I have never thought about it in this, uh, you know, because Inga's uh, approach now recently has been very archival. I have never thought about this kind of archival material or like archival characters mm -hmm. you know reoccurring or like like, like that it, it it's just was very entrenching like like a, an estrangement for me but uh, why i especially like uh, the claire holt case is that uh, uh, uh now this is a speculation and it gets a bit personal but i, I think that inga in a way uh identifies with her or, or like or not yeah. identifies but uh, <laughs> but 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 uh, having recently made a long interview with her then i kind of feel that that i, I can see why she was so or why she is so uh, you know taken by that character because because of her you know uh, lack of nationality or something like that that she is all over the place or something it, it kind of felt that that she at the moment anyway would like to perceive herself or would like at the moment she wants for herself a life like that or something no, so, going so, into so, psychological could be no, 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 but, no but that makes for a very nice personal but, uh, contact so in, in this sense I, I, I again mm -hmm. I like it for that uh, but I'm not sure when I now go back to the exhibition setting and not having made this long interview with Inga Lats and not knowing her that well uh, would I perceive it like that most probably not but yeah. uh, but this is your privilege of Kind of. That doesn't mean that it is like that, but it could easily be. Curators are just like any other human, and they kind of relate to things that they feel close to. So whether it's a topic or it's uh, pers personalities or, or or stories or whatever, and, and and definitely in some kind of sense she felt very close to this story. So in some kind of layer, it definitely is very much about her because what we like it is but, but very but, much uh, connected but, but my point is when, that, when, when that's true i would like her to embrace it more because at the moment it is Louis, Louis Kahn is an Estonian architect type of thing at the moment it's a bit like you know no, but, 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 but what exactly would you, uh, you you mean by that would you also like uh, her photo next to Claire Holt's photo <laughs> or something like that or? Yeah. Yeah. well I guess in the rhetorics about how she presents no, I don't even not, I don't know if rhetorics but I guess the way how she would present what she has chosen in the exhibition to be more uh, kind of honest about. Uh, well, but but not that it's in some sense dishonest or something. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. But uh, but her photo next to to Claire's photo is uh, brings us to what Shelda said about those uh, yellow post notes at the exhibition. And Eva Boloda, for example, does it in a way. She puts mm. her self portrait mm -hmm. uh, next to the portraits of the. Unknown traveling woman uh, around the world. Yeah, no, but but her own, <laughs> but her own self-portrait is in the corner where the portraits of those guys, based on whose private collections the Birsha collection is made. So, mm. so she kind of uh, you know makes this, as you said, very political statement that uh, you know we have those uh, big male collectors from the 19th century here, and uh, and then we now we put here this 21st century uh, tra traveling artist mm. <laughs> who uh, you know doesn't have much more. Uh, much other resources uh, for making collection than picking up found photographs. You know, like I, I see that this political gesture, and and she does a very personal thing with putting her self portrait next to those self portraits. So in a way, yes, because you know the curator, uh, it seems to me, acts here a little bit like uh, you know in a similar way as an author. So why not put her self portrait next to Claire's? Or you maybe could kind of dare to say. Uh even kind of bolder statement that actually the exhibition is very much her portrait or is it 
Well, but at this point, I just have to ask, what do we gain or uh, what do we lose <laughs> if we put it like that? I mean, okay, for people who are knowing, it uh, may be yeah, relevant, uh, but uh, for the majority of visitors, mm -hmm. it shouldn't really be important. I mean, uh, uh, I would suppose so. We <laughs> can even speculate if all curators are doing this in every exhibition, yeah. you know, because there's a kind of... No, no, this is what yeah. I said about... Even, even the uh, person who uh, curated the permanent exposition, I mean, <laughs> whoever yeah. that is. Yes and no. <laughs> in some cases it's very obvious, in some I mean, cases uh, it's... I mean, okay, that it sort of boils down to this myth about uh, curatorial invisibility or neutrality or whatever you want to call it, which uh, probably has never been there, but... Uh, uh. Although, at the same time with this exhibition, I could actually say that what is a big uh, positive thing, and at the same time for me also a negative thing, is uh, how delicate she tries to come into this space and 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 put the oh. artworks into this space. You know, kind of that, almost like trying not to kind of, you know, so that nothing in. In, in any way would be um, not in a physical but kind of I don't know what what kind of sense moved or 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 but or, I do or traumatized or something like that or <laughs> I mean I do wonder though how much of that was the museum itself saying like you can't touch anything you know <laughs> yeah 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 of course there is always this aspect uh, but no also the way how also design was made which was also very beautiful i think very elegant uh, but also very very neutral like kind of that it would it did not itself uh, made any statement except that yeah it will yeah it will be very uh, kind of minimalistic and neutral and and which makes again for me this remark that they feel like more like those uh, uh, notes uh, put in the space. Uh, put in, I mean, okay, you could say that in a sort of a physical, spatial sense, but uh, definitely would not agree about it in a symbolic sense. I mean, if you take uh, someone like uh, Nicholas Rarich, who is, uh, uh, well, quite important uh, for many people here, and uh, uh, you put next to him, uh, and you link his heritage to this uh, ultra-nationalist organization with its... Uh, uh, pamphlets and xenophobia. I mean, okay, you, you could say that it is a little reminiscent of that uh, large graph that links Osama bin Laden with George Bush, Bush but uh, uh, nevertheless, I mean, it's by no means uh, sort of uh, an invisible gesture or a very kind gesture. I mean, I could uh, sort of imagine a context uh, where uh, the holder of the collection might not be uh, as open to have this sort of uh, connotations about about that. So, mm. and also about uh, uh, I mean I mean also the, the the materials relating to to the exhibi uh, the Indian exhibition and also the exhibition from the Republic of Congo. Mm. I mean the press clipping. Uh, okay, it's not really the uh, doesn't really have to, that much to do with the holder of the collection or the museum. I think probably the, the article in the newspaper was written by some third person, uh, but uh, it. Uh, quite explicitly, I mean, uh, uh, cast the the whole fact in a fairly exotic light, and of course, it is good. Uh, it, it is nice to see from the LCCA and from the organizers that they acknowledge this 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 fact that there there is some sort of a dissonance. That in that sense, we probably are not yet completely global in relating to mm -hmm. uh, issues that are important in South Southeast Asia, for example. But getting back yeah, to, I mean, so what I was uh, saying earlier about this kind of political decision to reverse this, actually you can see it in the design as well, because as we notice it has this kind of a marbling effect mm -hmm. on inside. So it's of course referring to this kind of enlightenment uh, ideas, and when you're approaching a collection like that, and you see that it's partitioned in that way, and that people are still going in there all the time, seeing basically European art and then other, you know? Like this mm -hmm. is a art contemporary fact. Yeah. So how do you approach this when you're intervening in the collection is uh, one of the first things that you have to uh, deal or think about, right? Well, it sort of, of reminds me uh, of my first visit to Canada, where uh, every major museum seemed to have a special room or section devoted to the art of the first, na contemporary art from the First Nations. 
And uh, it, it is, of course, a somewhat problematic uh, proposition in the sense that, uh, on the one hand, it is important to give the artists and the art visibility, but on the other hand, if you label them like that, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> do you not achieve the exact opposite? Or it's, uh, well, yeah, the old debate about uh, women artists and LGBT artists and uh, what, the, what, the label, uh, what, what exactly does this uh, labeling achieve? Mm -hmm. Should we uh, try to talk about uh, particular artworks? We had already Claire Holt, and we talked also about uh, Krishna. Uh, and, uh, Maybe we can talk about, I kind of linked them together, is uh, Andrei Strokins and, um, and how does he, the, the Yang Sing. Mm -hmm. Yang Sing, the high noon, which is actually this little kind of story about oh, yeah, the, the about trying to sell the idea about stealing art and then Vera which, Mokina, which would no be <laughs> Vera Mokina, yeah, which is yeah, spoiler, those who still want to see that <laughs> in <course>. Belarus, <laughs> yes, in Belarus, yeah. yeah so Yang Sing has a yeah, spoiler alert, yeah. Don't <laughs> you have to the story. <laughs> Go first to the exhibition if you continue watching. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's a little narrative about uh, one uh, weird art historian uh, working in Belarus who tries to sell the idea of, uh, of making a proper contemporary art event <laughs> and uh, stealing Vera Muhina uh, from an exhibition. But uh, as I understand, his uh, sales don't go too well. His colleagues are a bit suspicious about <laughs> who cares about Vera Muhin and why should it be stolen. And uh, and his main claim is that just because nobody cares about Vera Muhin, it should be <laughs> stolen. You know, to to get attention to this uh, unknown, <laughs> or, or, sorry, not unknown, forgotten star. <laughs> well, I suppose that quite closely relates to what the uh, uh, exhibition uh, achieved in relation to the permanent exposition but uh, uh, and to, I mean to, to attract uh, a broader contemporary attention uh, yeah you, you you made it first time to the exhibition I mean that's already uh, impressive <laughs> I achieved right. yes it is embarrassing to admit that but uh, yeah, you know you're just considering how many exhibitions you do visit uh, I'm not speaking about per year let's say per week then <laughs> Yeah, yeah, surprise. rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and so, Shelda wants to uh, relate this. Uh, uh, no, I was kind of linking it together with Strokin's uh, work, which is which is all mm -hmm. very visual, which is but, but did basically visual. Describe it. <clears throat> <laughs> so, Andre Strokin's is known as a photographer, and many times actually a photographer who or an artist who. Is not even obligatory always working with his uh, w uh, working as a photographer, but as uh, the one who is collecting or archiving some photographies and then making kind of new collection or new display of them together, kind of creating new story uh, um, by, by this collection. So in this case, he has kind of come back to from this um, vernacular, or how you call it. Uh, back back to the, to photographing himself, but still having this kind of curiosity um, moment about it that he's very I think uh, uh, well known for how how he sees things and what he's interested in, and in this case it's about uh, the the, um, the the sculpture collection part of the museum, which uh, almost never sees the daylight. Let's call it like that, uh, and which is a particularity of many museums. Uh, because sculptures are big, heavy, problematic, and, uh, and and so they are not exhibited a lot. So they are usually put in a way with something cover, covered over it. And so he kind of photographs those ghostly uh, sculptures, uh, with the white kind of covers, which makes them, you know, even more ghostly and more lighter and kind of... Uh, and, and exhibits those weird uh, sculpture ghost never to never never to be seen or maybe someday seen but we never know when uh, in in the permanent exhibition with, um, with behind actually three uh, sculptures from the 19th century by Italian if I don't mistake Italian sculptures from the Baltic German 
originally from the Baltic German collection, so which is all delicate uh, nymph and, and mm -hmm. you know, nymph kind of magic uh, creature, woman uh, posing. I don't know if can I be more explicit about how it looks there. But it looks very beautiful, let's say like that, with those ghostly still a bit suspiciously you can see have heavy kind of uh, big uh, sculptures i would say masculine sculptures uh, now we can get into this kind of gender topic <laughs> <laughs> a little bit uh, over interpreting it but maybe not uh, and, and there's those uh, free um, sculptures that are always in this permanent exhibition and always in this if not daylight then spotlight let's call it like that and and then yeah so, so i think like that, so, and what's the parallel that you how you but i think that the yeah. parallel is even deeper when we bring up your realization of what the central uh, oh, photograph yeah, it is was, i think it's not in the catalog again but but i think it was written there on the on the text that was in the display the, the middle one of those three stroking images is goggles pushed uh, which which made me wonder, you know, where, uh, wh uh, why Gogol? Like, is it that not even why Gogol, but isn't significant that it's Gogol? Like, yeah, yeah, because uh, was he the one with the cat uh, cat ears or? Uh, uh, <laughs> We're going sure. back to the mummy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not the mummy. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, there could be. But, but I mean, most probably, no, 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 it could conscious. be just some practical reason why it just so happened. You know, whatever he could find in the in the storage mm. and how they were placed, and and you know which photos came out best. It, it might not be significant at but all. This but, is unfortunate, um, unfortunate kind of for those of us who are curious. <laughs> mm. It's kind of unfortunate that this story is not told to us. Let's say like mm. that in the exhibition. That yes, there is the titles, and it's like oh, there is that under that. Uh, uh, white uh, cover and, and that is uh, the sculpture actually represents that and that uh, but but why the photographer chose it is there some kind of uh, meaning behind it or it's just a coincidence that uh, maybe he just liked the forms and how they looked and so it might be just formal choice but it might be a very symbolic choice why those particular well, I was sculpture. perfectly happy with the formal choice. I think the whole <laughs> composition was totally mm -hmm. sublime with yeah. the three art, three arches, and the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, but, the names. No, no, but, uh, <laughs> but, but why I ask about the story is that when you link it to this uh, Jan uh, Xing, yeah, uh, when, when you relate this to this Jan Xing story where they want to, uh, you know, get uh, more attention to Vera Muhina, who is the forgotten, you know, and his, his uh, argumentation is that because she's forgotten, we have to, you know, that, that the more potential she has. So now there are those hidden away sculptures, which, you know, when you, when we look for the link, then for me, this Xing uh, story linked with, with Strokin's just because of those, you know, those are the hidden away, you know. If they would be destroyed or, or broken or lost totally, it would be even cooler. You know, somebody should have. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether the museum would be willing to give any information about that, but uh, somebody should have investigated the lost works of the museum. Mm. You know. Well, I would uh, per perhaps in that sense link it with, uh, in a, in another way. I mean, there is a trend in uh, post-Soviet space to have these uh, museums of socialist art, which sometimes are sort of sculpture parks. I was visited one recently in Sofia in Bulgaria. So the, I think we can be is, quite, uh, quite sure that uh, the sculptures on the, the covers are not socialist sculptures. They're probably something uh, less mm. fancy. But in the same time, <laughs> when we link those two stories, we can kind of imagine that, that maybe Vera Muhina's work is under one of those covers. You know, you never know. It kind of, it doesn't mean that there is any connection, most probably not, but it kind of nicely makes this connection, you know. Uh, is, is there Especially a... if you go first to read the story and then you end up seeing Strokins, which most probably won't happen like that. I think that it, the, the way no, you for, for go... For me, it was one of the last things that I saw, so it was Strokins, sort of yeah. cathartic, yeah. Oh. Mm. Uh, oh. But, yeah, I can imagine. Oh. <laughs> I, I, in that sense, I sort of wonder if there's a photograph of uh, work by Vera Mokina in the Claire Holt slideshow. Uh, but... <laughs> Oh, so yeah. Although in, in the, most probably there is a lot of nice actually traces that uh, uh, you have to. I don't know. Be a kind of a very careful kind of uh, uh, 
looker, know how it's in English, uh, watcher of the exhibition, perceiver of the exhibition, and maybe even several times uh, go to the exhibition to kind of start to get, get this detective nose for those subtleties, of course, of it, which uh, might be there and might be also without also organizers knowing it, that there's sometimes just this magic happens, which I really like about exhibitions also from the curator's perspective, that sometimes something happens also without you calculating that to happen, you know, mm -hmm. kind of that, uh, like I have told you, I think, about uh, when I curated the Madras Saberov's exhibition in Tartu, uh, I put her in a monumental gallery, and, and her topic was a lot about not having babies or having babies, about the state demanding us to be a patriotic woman and give babies to Estonia and give babies to Latvia and kind of, you know, be it real patriotic woman and and then and then while she's installing the exhibition i just i suddenly realized that opposite is the kindergarten and that of course because she's a girl who 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 is bald head then all those little children are constantly curiously watching her over the fence and standing there in the crowd and looking at her and, and it made such a nice <laughs> link to it and then mm -hmm. after the performance in the, the the little girls in the opening were playing around with the with the, this uh, baby cradle and all that so there was all those weird things that suddenly started to happen that nor me nor matra was kind of calculating to kind of <laughs> but it all worked so nicely into the project so this is my kind of point that i'm trying to make also with uh, some things that we might now talk about, which maybe Inga uh, has never kind of thought herself about. Mm -hmm. But it's out of her hands. So yeah, no, 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 I'm just saying about the beauty of it. It's, uh, I mean, you know, that, uh, you, you can't quite, I mean, it's not uh, socialism, you can't control things like that. No, 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 you don't have to. This is the beauty of uh, kind of... Well, uh, speaking of coincidences, uh, I'm sort of reminded, uh, uh, if, if I combine the Tunnel Runders video, which has this sort of uh, uh, see as slavery connotations or the black ships coming to Japan in the uh, late 19th century and forcing the country to open to Western commerce and whatever. And by the uh, way, then there's the black gondola by installed in the atrium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that that I uh, did not link, but okay. <laughs> no, I tried to, but I didn't know about the black ships, you know, it didn't really occur to me. But I tried to find a link. Like. <laughs> but by the way, also, Donnell is kind of representing this sign that he put near the near the Daugava as the monument. Mm -hmm. well, uh, it's actually a monument. Yeah. Oh, it's a sign, okay, but that doesn't that's matter. Monument doesn't have to be a sculpture obligatory. It can be a sign as a monument. <laughs> and of course, if you compare it to, to that uh, famous uh, sea video by Waldemar Johansson's, uh, it is so very, Daniel's uh, work is so very unheroic, but uh, much closer to how, 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 how the imagery would be read from a Western perspective. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's also, I was commenting that having grown up in the United States, the idea of a landscape as a monument is very strong because you have like, I don't know, like Plymouth Rock, Washington Crossing and things like that. That's like, it's not a monument. It's just like, this is the place where something happened. And then the whole like river becomes the monument to this like event or something. So it does have that kind of extremely colonial kind of connotation, mm. which works well in the context of this oriental wing. Mm. No, altogether Daugava is, uh, there, there is so many uh, stories linked with Daugava mm. that, that, that it is a strong symbol anyway to, to use this particular river in, in any kind of stories. We in Artishok Bina also had a, um, a, a work of art which which was basically one of the, 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 the window from through which you could see the dog over the part of the windows where you could actually see the water was painted away so you could mm -hmm. still see the landscape but could not see the dog over uh, tunnel render being one of the critics on the Tartishuk Pahenial uh, I can tell you that he was partly the inspiration behind the uh, <laughs> behind the, let's let's paint the Taugava away. <laughs> so so at least Patola Taugava has a lot of uh, and, 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 <laughs> symbolic and, and and in Donald's case he this is not the first river he has used for yeah, his yeah, work yeah. he, he yeah. likes He's to work with rivers. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 <laughs> As you know in 
Yeah. Emma Yogi and the first the skyscraper in Tartu and uh, uh, no, no, it was something. I think it had something to do with Emma Yogi's uh, name, and and it was it was it was a very long uh, and weird. This is an article written by him about uh, name Emma Yogi and how it has some really weird uh, and uh, going back to German language some very weird uh, connotations. Uh, and and at, at all this whole Tartu um, uh, Tartu Exp uh, the, the the kind of uh, the Tartu avant-garde the Mayuki is yeah cu- culturally very important. So it's, <laughs> you know I don't know bathing in Mayu mud is, uh, is you know it, it can get really weird. So yeah, for Tunnel the, the river is very important, and and with Taugava it's it's kind of weird. Taugava is the you know, it's the entrance in a way, mm-hmm. which so because he has worked also a lot with the river being the border uh, between east and west. Uh, it uh, help me now. Tanube, uh, mm. for example, you know that this is the border between eastern and western. Uh, I think in one of his videos he even used Zizek's uh, Zizek making an excursion or something like. Yeah, on this side of Western Europe, where uh, 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 oh no, in this side we have Eastern Europe, where women get uh, beaten and harassed and they like it, and on this side we have Western Europe, where women get beaten and harassed and they don't like it. <laughs> so this this is the two sides of the river. It's kind of. Um, but one work that I uh, I wanted to talk about is actually Eva Balode mm-hmm. and uh, Alexei uh, Murashko, uh, because this was for me the most, uh, uh, in a way, challenging of it. Uh, Angels also on the exhibition tried to kind of understand what's having happened. Eva Balode's, <laughs> yeah, Eva Balode's part is in a way simple. She is uh, collecting uh, found photographs. Altogether she uh, also f- uh, has, uh, is collecting found films and she altogether is just interested in this it's analog, it's found analog objects, yeah. okay. so, media. And, 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 so. and so she has female uh, <laughs> photographs of females in different countries. On some occasions it is even kind of obvious that yeah maybe they are you know traveling or on the road or on the way somewhere <laughs> with a lot of luggage on others look like some uh, uh, on, on others it looks like a, 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 I don't know a holiday shot and mm-hmm. on some they are just sitting in a cafe but so and the story around it is has this very simple feministic uh, idea about the collection being put together by uh, the collection of Pirsha uh, being uh, put together by uh, mostly male uh, the Baltic Germans and and and, and all and male all male yeah sorry yeah <laughs> all male Baltic Germans sorry mostly wasn't yeah, uh, yeah. there's wasn't always correct. this hope and, that and mostly. <laughs> I'm kind of used not to use those absolutes or something <laughs> just to protect myself <laughs> but yeah it's fact <laughs> And, uh, and 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 so she kind of with those found photos tries to refer to the fact that uh, that she's happy about living in a times where women like have the right to travel. So I have I have two problems. One was uh, very nicely put by Casper uh, Vanax, who referred to that uh, you know instead of working with those you know instead of having random photos of found women, she should have you know ticked up the uh, the images of the wives of the collectors and try to dig up something about their uh, you know, story or something that would have related it very well to the collection. Because at the moment we have those found photographs of women who can travel, okay, uh, and, and she's happy about having born in a time where she can travel and has all the rights. But then again, you know, when you say you are happy of having been born on a time where you as a woman have all the rights, when we talk about uh, the local um, condition when we talk about Latvia, then, uh, you know, uh, uh, there the, the really isn't a time when woman and man was so much different that, you know, <laughs> you have had, uh, women have had the right to vote in Latvia since since that moment where Latvians had the right to vote. You know, it, it I, I kind of, for, for me, Eva's story brings, uh, like like she makes a too global jump or something, it, it all kind of falls apart for me. Uh, oh. I would Go, go ahead. I, I would relate it to. Yeah, I, I feel a bit uneasy about doing that, but uh, 
the for, for for me the link of these uh, women tra traveling is quite closely related to Claire Holt and uh, photos in the slideshow. Mm -hmm. uh, and at some point I was just wondering uh, at what point uh, uh, does the difference come between uh, simple travel photos and uh, photos by an anthropologist studying a particular country, especially in the context of the uh, bir uh, birja among pretty landscapes and portraits of nice people. And then you have photos of uh, some, uh, somewhat strange looking objects, but uh, projected on that uh, marble wall, I mean... Uh, uh, they know, kind of feel as random as, as what uh, Balwoods... Uh, uh, not necessarily as random, I would say they, they, they feel somewhat as related to uh, firstly traveling and only afterwards to anthropology or science or uh, study. I mean, I think for me definitely the first association is uh, going to, I don't know, faraway places and... Uh, mm -hmm. Well, firstly I need to... Uh, rebuke your assertion <laughs> because I mean you know we can't minimize the feminist struggle and I think that mm -hmm. even today there's such a huge difference between men and women and so to say in the past that it could have even been alike is uh, by far uh, false but um, anyway then other than that um, we were also speaking about the form which in Yeva Ballad is actually makes somewhat sense because it is these kinds of old photographs um, and so it's in this kind of almost uh, old camera that you have to peek mm -hmm. and yeah, look inside. Old camera. Yeah. And it even looks like old camera. Right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Even it's the form. This camera obscura kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Camera obscura, which is also kind of, you know, tying it back to this historical collection, etc, yes. etc. Et However, um, I'm not sure if the presentation and actual objects are really uh, reaching their full effect. And then mm. when we kind of compare how this is tying her work together with Alexei's, we were also discussing about how we were unsure why this comparison was made or this form, why they're stuck together in this format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, uh, Alexei, uh uh, but Murashko, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, Alexei Murashko's work is... Oh, by the way, is originally from Belarus. Okay. Again, we can make a uh, weird link true, yeah. <laughs> to the story about to the, story. the Belarus. <laughs> Belarus uh, Belarusian, was he art historian or curator? Uh, or I think something? he was an art historian. No, art know. historian, yeah. so, so here, you, here you go. Here. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, that was the other problem, that I never understood why... Uh, it, it took me a moment to at all realize that they belong together. That it is like in the in the fold in this leaflet, it's uh, they they actually even on one uh, you know page or something. And and uh, because I was still the end, we were even with um, uh, Angels discussing like um, why are those two artists presented in the same way? Because we couldn't see any connection, so we thought they are different. You know, just did, did did you uh, find a link uh, uh, just before you uh, say something? No, 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 we didn't. I <laughs> was the, really curious. That was did the, you find no, anything? No, we didn't. That was the point. No. We didn't really also okay. break... Uh, we didn't manage to bite through Alexei's uh, works because they, they feel like kind of one-liners of which I not even didn't get all of them. For example, the one with the masks, I failed to understand what it mm -hmm. is supposed to mean. And, and others were just, uh, you know, a caricature you could have, you know, I could imagine it with a stencil on Tartu. Well, I can very, try it very shortly to say what I thought, but it will be an interpretation, is that, that what links them together, but, you know, not not smooth way, let's call it like that, is that what she, she represents is this different... Uh, uh, you know, or one kind of perspective how to look at the history, you know, from this kind of g gender angle, you know, or gender problematics uh, of the history or something like that. And what he is doing also is kind of by those little kind of uh, symbolic drawings, which are very caricaturish, uh, he kind of represents those uh, different possibilities, different powers or d different symbols or different solutions for the thing because there are these three different kind of things it kind of also is like a play like like this 
joker you know where you will play and which one will fall out for you you know where, which which kind of hanging possibility or <laughs> which kind of mm-hmm. uh, religious <laughs> power or something and sometimes for for example what Tunnel kind of talks about you know that they came and they and, and the image actually this graphic image from this Baltic uh, Baltic German uh, artist is um, Baltic German artist is is that this is you know this image represents the beginning of Baltic state history and for the and for the and for the locals it's actually uh, kind of the beginning of enslavement and so f- for so, so it kind of. Oh, uh, but was it just me? But uh, I, I was having trouble telling which were the visitors and which were the locals in the image. So, <laughs> 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 I mean, I. <laughs> There was some stuff being exchanged and uh, whatever, but... <laughs> no, I don't think there were any locals there. <laughs> I, weren't they I th- there were different kind of merchants, just, uh, you know... Local merchants and uh, travel... Uh, th- th- those who... And the Bremen merchants. Well, uh, but, but you know, how they depict it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but coming back, I mean, just uh, listening to, 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 to you describe the uh, Eva Belwood and uh, Murashko's works as... Uh, uh, not belonging together. I mean, it wouldn't be such a leap to connect it to the entire exposition. I mean, you're peeking into something that, but does it actually belong together or? Uh... Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that the whole uh, whole exhibition, not not the whole exhibition in Pirsa as such, could be mm. uh, said as not belonging together. Yeah, <laughs> it is, that's a good point. <laughs> but won't you agree about this interpretation, just what I gave about that? This is actually, the, in comparison with other works, it 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 is about this kind of what could be the uh, one way how to look at things, and and it's very directly also physically kind of represented by that you have to peek through this eye, eye hole or, or keyhole, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, but what you mean is that those, uh, Alexei Moroshko's, uh, the, the image is kind of... Uh, Just uh, like also the Eva's uh, works, that this is kind of one way how to gaze on things. But I mean, I would argue that no. all the works have this. It's not specifically those ones that are in the camera. No, but they kind of, you know, of course, but they, the, these particular works kind of, for me, feel that they are most forwardly for uh, giving this message to us, uh, while the others we can mm-hmm. look upon d- differently. Still need to think mm, on I'm that trying. One. <laughs> I'm You're trying. <laughs> but I still don't see a reason why Morosko's works are in the box. <laughs> <laughs> or indeed in the same box. Yeah, like that they are linked together, but I don't see the link between them. Now there is again, just like with Strokin, most probably some kind of story behind the scene that we just know know about, and and that mm. that makes. So, uh, that just means that we need to open the box and see what's behind the, <laughs> behind the image. But uh, no, I mean, I, I I personally was fairly happy with uh, the works functioning as something that makes you aware, but the uh, act of looking and also this uh, thing about. Uh, I don't know, belonging together or not belonging together. I mean, it's sort of quite natural to think uh, about the Museum of Foreign Art as, uh, well, basically, that is what it is in Europe. I mean, you have stuff from the East, stuff from the West, and stuff from uh, primitive cultures and whatever, but uh, uh, perhaps it's not not, not as obvious as uh, we, we take it to be. And, of course, also coming back to what uh, Angel said, of course... It is, it is important not to underestimate the uh, feminist struggle and also uh, what I said earlier about the presence of uh, stories from Southeast Asia, for example, in Latvia. I mean, just because the, there is not enough of, of them, I mean, it's not, imp- not it's not doesn't mean that it's not important to I mean, bring them here. It still is important. No, but the, yeah, no, I'm I'm just uh, about this belonging, not belonging. It- kind of which in the exhibition maybe was not again not for me so so present i had to kind of uh, think about actually what i already know the story of the of the museum to link it all together is about the the story of the collection uh, that is there the permanent collection and uh, and the story of the museum because i still feel kind of that uh, that this particular museum which is 
since 2005 again a part of the Latvian National Art Museum but before uh, it's it's it feels like that it's kind of uh, divided from the rest of the museum or, or divided from the Latvian National uh, Art Museum uh, which happened actually in the Soviet times when they, they were divided into separate museums although the story is actually that uh, that that the collections in the beginning in the um, in the beginning of 20th century they were put in or, or actually already in the 19th century and then on the 20th century kind of officially by, uh, when the museum was uh, built uh, the, which was at that time Riga um, art museum uh, all those collections were happily living together <laughs> and uh, and and there there was actually really this uh, kind of shared history or this uh, common history and actually having it all together and 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 then suddenly kind of everything was divided uh, into kind of that there is now this national art and there is this other art or other treasures or that are kind of belonging to something that is not truly ours or something like that that there is this conscious kind of split and and it's still till this day there and the split was also felt when the National Art Museum was rebuilt and the new permanent exhibition in the National Art Museum in the, uh, was was made and suddenly the Russian artists were also all uh, including Rerich uh, were sent to Birja and it made in the, some lit, uh, in some of the Russian communities uh, in in Latvia kind of strong reaction that 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 by that you're saying that they are not part of of, of Latvian culture or the Latvian history and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we can also remember that at some point uh, one of the institutions is called the Museum of Latvian and Russian Art. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. No, no, the, 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 about the titles, we could <laughs> make another hour. Kind of <laughs> how actually, which is a very, very interesting topic about how, how the, the, the titles, which also very strongly represents the identity of the museums, how it has constantly been. Uh, uh, being, being changed and, and by that also changing the statement of what it represents. Mm -hmm. So uh, our hour is full, uh, so any final notes? No? Maybe let's start with you and kind of do we. <laughs> final <laughs> notes? Yeah. yeah, overall I'm a fan of the initiative. I actually th wish that, you know, contemporary art uh, can be used more to dynamize these kinds of uh, collections, but I think there's yeah some things to work out still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this actually reminds me that there used to be in the Rundal Castle um, uh, some initiatives in the 90s which were kind of installations uh, also in the castle, in the castle yard. And some years ago, I contacted the director of the museum, and he said that that was a bad idea. He would never allow it to happen again. Now he has resigned, no, so we will see if the next uh, museum director suddenly would be interested yeah. in collaborating. With but imagine, art. I went. <laughs> but imagine, I went twice to this Riga verse now. That would never happen otherwise, right? <laughs> yeah, you can get this new audience <laughs> to the museum. Now, for me, which. Uh, mm, we don't have any more uh, time to talk about. For me, of course, uh, for me, very fa fa very loved uh, uh, topic is the curiosity cabinets, and and of course, uh, this particular uh, exhibition kind of made me again think about them and about how how we actually in the music uh, museums or museums context have forgotten about the uh, about how how great they actually were, they were trying to build this micro universe where, you know, try to st tell the story in very different kind of layers or show the world with those different kind of pleasures or something like that, which actually kind of makes this portrait of the world in totally different kind of angles instead of what the museums are now doing of kind of trying to make some kind of clean lines. Uh, and also the private museums who would actually are if the state museum is kind of asked, demanded from the state to do that, this and national ideology and statistics of how many people will come and all that, then the private museums actually could embrace it more because they don't have to respond to any 
uh, government uh, kind of uh, so so yeah for me kind of this came back to that that when this exhibition comes in into this permanent uh, exhibition then together as i start to form some things that used to be known as curiosity cabinets and yeah for me that's a very exciting kind of thought and, and i would wish that it would be done uh, done more or that museums would think about how to come back to the curiosity cabinet uh, more in how they represent things. Sorry, I'm again a very <laughs> long talker. <laughs> um, for me, the exhibition uh, picks up several uh, narratives, several stories that uh, I have uh, missed in uh, Latin contemporary art space and uh, I'm happy that they are there and, uh, well, as you talked about, uh, uh, some uh, lines of uh, or some themes from uh, LCCA and Ingolat's previous exhibitions were continuing. In this exhibition I would so sort of also hope that uh, some of them would con uh, continue further and uh, I would definitely look forward to that. Yeah, in this sense, I totally agree with Palstead. I, I I'm also happy about having, uh, about having the chance to see Inga's uh, curatorial uh, work, uh, and, and having the possibility to follow it that way. And uh, and but I'm a little bit sad about that. You know, the, uh, I I constantly forget how, uh, I don't know, at least for me, you know, nicely inspiring uh, those recordings are. That you know, the exhibition closes on uh, November the thirty. And uh, I, I am sure I won't make it to to write to steal all your ideas that you have uttered here and put them into a nice article. So well, I'm I'm really yeah sorry we're not having the moment to write about the exhibition. And actually, one another last thing that we did not talk about is actually uh, kind of in the manner of this booklet, which also doesn't talks about it, uh, is is that actually this exhibition is linked to two other exhibitions, one in Stockholm mm. and one in uh, in Poland somewhere. Kodansk. Kodansk, 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 yeah. yeah, and um, and that actually this uh, shared history idea came from from Swedish. Uh, yeah. It was actually a it is actually a Swedish project, but uh, uh, you can read about it in Shared History homepage about it. Uh, but this is it, and it kind of till the end also doesn't really explain explain till the end um, uh, those those links and why why how how, how exactly uh, what was uh, chosen and. and, and Museum, it also kind of doesn't say anything about yeah, yeah exactly why, why exactly those free countries from the Baltic Sea and so on but, but we can of course be arrogant and say that you know because the, the leaflet doesn't say anything about it except uh, the image of the uh, shared yeah. Uh, yeah. Of, of the map of all the free sp yeah. places except, <laughs> except in, for in, sa in, saving on graphic design yes. <laughs> it, it doesn't say nothing about it so we can ignore it <laughs> Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, till next Bye. time. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> so, that's it. Thank you.